Hi, I'm Alan McRobby, and welcome to Scopology Program 3. This is on uh, just making some measurements with a scope. We're going to look at three different ways to do it. Back years ago, you only had one way to do it with your eyeballs, and now there's two other ways, so we're going to go through that. But before we do that, and before we hook up anything to anything, we need to have a discussion on grounding of the oscilloscope uh, in a safe manner. So let's go to the board and have a quick chat, and then we'll come back to here. Okay, so here might be a typical measurement scenario where you've got your, your AC operated scope and you're working on an AC powered device under test and you're trying to measure some logic gate inside the thing, see what it's doing. Okay, so what we've got is we've got the logic gate powered up by the DC supply inside your unit and the DC supply, of course, getting its power from the AC wall outlet. And the scope's doing the same thing over here with its AC power. So you can get out an ohmmeter and just verify this, but usually for most scopes that, that you know, we find, the shield around the BNC connectors of your two or four inputs are actually referred back to the same ground point as the ground pin on the power plug here. So that means that that's exactly what this ground lead is connected to as well on the, on the scope probe. So the question is, is, is V2 really ground? That's what you have to, to make sure of in some cases. Um, because the scope makes a measurement V1 minus V2, V2 being ground or it may not actually be ground. And if it isn't, then that's going to that's going to cause a problem because this is point here is going to try to either pull that up or down to the same potential. So uh, we have had some people call us and and have have had some problems with this. So um, if you're never sure about something, always make a measurement using a battery operator handheld DVM or uh, use a differential probe if you're not sure. And later on in our series we're going to go over the use of a, of a differential probe. So we'll, we'll clarify that explanation. Okay. So now we're back and we understand grounding. Uh, I've got a safe system here because I'm, I'm using a, the same power ground with all of these pieces of equipment. and. Uh, so I'm, I'm reasonably sure that everything is good and I'm getting good measurements. What we're trying to do here is we're, we're going to input a 4 volt peak to peak signal and we're going to uh, measure it in three different ways we're going to compare results. Now this is sort of like trying to take temperature with three different thermometers. They, they may all be really good thermometers but you're going to get three different readings. So one thing to remember about oscilloscopes is that they show you the wave as it's going in, along in time, and so you get a nice wave shape. And that's what scopes are really meant to do. There's other types of measuring equipment that are more precise, like digital voltmeters are more precise and, and have many more digits of resolution. And there's also frequency counters that can measure uh, frequencies of waveforms better than scopes can. But the, the point is today, there's a lot of good measurements that can be making, made with an oscilloscope and these other features actually add to the utility. So let's take a look at these three things here. What we have is we have a generator that's putting out a, a 4 volt peak to peak sine wave of about 200 hertz and I'm measuring it using uh, Fluke uh, DVM here and it's a true RMS reading meter so I'm looking for exactly 1.414 volts RMS and that'll give me my 4 volts peak to peak here on the scope. So you can see it here and the eyeball method is the first way. If, if, if you had scopes that years and years ago you didn't have any cursors or any automatic measurements and you had to kind of look at the graticule and say well we've got one volt per division there's four divisions, so we're pretty close to four volts there, and so that's how that's basically all you could do. The other way you, that you can do it today is you can use cursors that are built in, or you can use an automatic measurement. And actually, on this scope, I've got everything turned on at once, so you can see it. Now, if you're going to use cursors or even automatic measurements, it's helpful to have the scope show the largest waveform that's practical on this and uh, of course I've got enough room to show 4 volts peak to peak so that's what I've got showing here 
And my cursors, if you look at them, there's one that's highlighted here at the bottom. I'm going to roll it up a little bit. And then I can select the other cursor at the top and I can roll that around. And so basically you get the, the cursor measurements in most scopes we sell have them. Then you can get a readout right here on the scope and it says 3.975 volts peak to peak, which um, is about as good as my eyes can do it, actually. Um, what's, what's more helpful is possibly the automatic measurements, which are shown along the bottom here. I've got, I've got volts peak to peak, I've got frequency, and I've got RMS voltage here. Um, so let's take a look at what these are showing. Our peak to peak measurement is showing 4.02 volts, which isn't too bad. Um, if you notice that if I, if I decrease the peak to peak, uh, or the sensitivity of the, of the uh, input, I, you notice that the measurement tends to bounce around a little bit and it becomes less accurate. So again, give the scope the biggest thing that's practicable and then it will do a better job measuring. That also is true for the RMS measurement. And if we let this settle down, it gets very close to 1.414. Actually, it's right at 1.419 or 8 uh, volts peak, uh, RMS. So that's actually doing quite well. And just as an aside, let's take a look at the frequency right here. And you can see that it's 200 point something hertz. Sometimes it flops to 199. And if you also, if you're interested in doing that frequency measurement, um, slow the sweep speed down so that there's more cycles on the scope to count. And then you'll see that it, it'll actually give you 200.000. If you, if you tend to stretch the waveform out too much and get right down to just two cycles, you'll see that you get an error message right here. The scope can't compute it. So it really wants to see more than just a few cycles. And the more that you give it, uh, the better it can do at that. So just a couple of tips on making automatic measurements or measurements with cursors or the, the worst thing possible is the eyeball measurement. And we just looked at voltage here, but of course the cursors and the other measurements can do time and all sorts of other measurements as well. And, and there's an awful lot of things that can be pulled down uh, on this scope right here. If you wanted to, to change one, for instance, uh, let's, let's just pick one that's right here. There's a whole menu of different automatic measurements that can be made. And if the scope is set up pretty well, then uh, it does a fairly good job at uh, giving you some pretty good numbers. So that's it for this session, and thanks for watching.